Well, hi kids, great to see you again this week. Um, we're going to be finishing off the story of Jonah this morning, and you probably might be familiar with it. And we did quite a lot of familiar bits last week, thinking about Jonah running away from the Lord, being on the ship in the storm, being thrown into the sea, the big fish swallowing him, and then Jonah saying sorry to God and the fish getting rid of him onto dry land. Well, the story carries on, the true story of Jonah. God says again to Jonah, go to Nineveh and give them the message I want to give you. So this time Jonah goes and it takes him three days to get through the whole of the city bringing their message and this is the message. 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. That's the message. Now what's interesting is that the, that the people of Nineveh listen to what Jonah says and they believe it. They begin to fast which is basically going without food. They put on sackcloth, that is um, horrible sort of basic clothes, literally um, bags uh, of uh, rough, horrible sacks and stuff. That's what they put on. They take off their nice clothes and they put on horrible clothes. And they all do it. See, they, they hear what the, the, the message that Jonah brings from God and they believe it. And, and, they, and then what they are doing is they are humbling themselves before God. They are mourning over their sin. And even the king does it. And the king brings out a big command saying, everybody must do this. Everybody must put on sackcloth. Everybody must sit in ashes. Everybody must fast and not eat. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. And the whole city do it. 120,000 people. And God relents. He says, I will not bring this destruction. Wow, what an amazing God. And you think Jonah would be pleased, but he isn't. He's very angry about this. Because remember, the people of Nineveh are part of a country called Assyria. And Assyria are against Israel. So these are the enemies of Jonah. And he doesn't want them to be forgiven. He wants them to be destroyed. So he's angry and he says to God, this is why I didn't want to go. I knew you were a compassionate God. I know you um, re um, relent. I know you show uh, forgiveness to those who repent. Because, of course, Jonah has seen that in his own life, hasn't he? And Jonah is very upset. And he sits down outside the city and it's very hot and uh, his head's getting burnt by the sun. So God provides a plant, a, a vine, we think, and it grows over Jonah and it protects him from the sun. And Jonah's really pleased that this plant has come because he's not getting sunburnt and he's not overheating. But the next day, Jonah wakes up and the plant has withered away and he's angry, very angry. Angry, he says to God, enough to die. And God says to him, well, hang on a minute, Jonah. You loved that plant, didn't you? It protected you, but you didn't water it, you didn't provide it, but you wanted it, you liked it, and I took it away and you were angry with me. You see, God says to Jonah, I can do what I want to do. You see, you're not concerned about these 120,000 people in Nineveh who don't know anything about me, who don't know anything about how to be saved. Shouldn't I be bothered about them? Shouldn't I care about them and their city and all that is going in? And that's how the book ends. That's how the story ends with this question to Jonah. See, Jonah thinks that the Ninevites should get what they deserve. Destruction. But God is pointing out to Jonah that he deserved destruction himself. The sailors deserved destruction. But God relented. When they turned to him, God showed compassion on them and didn't bring about destruction. He didn't destroy Jonah. He didn't destroy the sailors. He didn't destroy the Ninevites. You see, the story of Jonah is not just about, really, about fish. And it's not really about ships. It's about God showing mercy, showing compassion, showing what we call grace to people who don't deserve it. People like Jonah, people like the Ninevites. And that speaks to us, you know, because if we're honest, a lot of us think, yeah, okay, we do wrong stuff, but we're not as bad as somebody else. And why should that person get anything from God? They're a bad person, I'm a good person. Well, the book of Jonah shows us the story of Jonah, the true story of Jonah, shows us that none of us is better than somebody else. We're all equal under God. And actually, we should rejoice and be happy that God chooses to have compassion on us. 
He chooses to bless us, but also that he chooses to show mercy to others and bless others because God is concerned about all people. He's concerned about everybody in this world. You see, God isn't just bothered about me or you and our church and our friends and our family. He's bothered about everyone, even the people you don't get on with, even those people who perhaps have been horrible to you. And yes, they do need to repent, but he, he's bothered about them as well. So I want you to take from this story today that God is bothered about everybody, not just you and not just me. And he cares about everybody. And if he chooses to show compassion to people, perhaps people we don't like, there's not for us to be cross about it or be jealous about it. It's for us to rejoice and be happy because God shows mercy to us and to everyone if they turn to him. Why don't we pray together as we finish this part of our online service? Lord God, we want to thank you that you are a God who does have compassion and mercy. We want to thank you that if we are trusting in Jesus, you have shown compassion to us. Lord, forgive us for thinking we are better than other people. Forgive us for wanting bad things happening to other people. Lord, help us to trust your mercy and your compassion and your grace. For you're a God who cares about all people and is bothered about them. In Jesus' name. Amen.